Welcome back. It's the Business Inside, Sun Plus TV Africa. Now, the federal government's plan to provide credit to 100,000 MSMEs has been loaded by analysts for its potential to support small business growth. Like the manufacturing loan scheme, analysts are, however, concerned about the 9% five-year facility due to the distortionary effect. Uh, joining me now to discuss further on this development is the president of the Association of Small Business Owners in Nigeria, Aspen, Dr. Femi Egbeshola. Many thanks for joining me, Dr. Egbeshola. Good morning and thank you for having me. It is indeed our pleasure. Well, let's start with the provision of credit to 100,000 um, SMEs. Uh, some people have actually described it as um, uh, uh, a step in the right direction. How do you... Uh, react to that, uh, although some people are saying that uh, the federal government should have explored the equity route through investment by the NSIA in eligible MSMEs and manufacturing companies instead of credit. What do you think, really? Well, um, I think it's a very good start from the government. It's um, a sign that the government actually feel the pains of uh, the economy, and particularly the engine of growth, that is the MSMEs. And um, coming up with a palliative with 9% interest rate is very interesting to quite a number of us. Uh, if you look around today, the interest rate of the banks is between 28 and 30%. Nobody can do business with that. So at 9% and uh, payable in 36 months, I think it's a very good one. And it's going to actually stimulate the economy in the long run. Uh, our concern really is uh, that... Um, 100,000 MSMEs uh, is a drop in the quotient. Uh, that today, uh, according to the statistics of Smedan and Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, we have about 40 million uh, entrepreneurs, business owners in Nigeria. So uh, the intervention is going to one part be on nano entrepreneurs, which is about 1 million entrepreneurs, then on MSMEs, which is about 100,000. That's 1.1. A million entrepreneurs in the middle of uh, about 40 million. So the impact may be very uh, little, it may not be very significant as we want it, but we hope that in the in future something more will come and uh, impact more on quite a number of uh, the MSMEs. We are also concerned about um, the vehicle government want to use to uh, disburse this fund. Uh, over time, one of the challenges we have had is that um, uh, government good intentions and policies fall in the wrong hands. At times, intervention goes to the hands of political business owners. Hmm. So we are wondering how government wants to go about this this time, such that uh, it will get to the real business owners so that it can have the needed effect in the economy. We are also thinking that um, uh, it's also good for government to begin to see how they can... Uh, is uh, the business environment so that um, it will not be just funding that will uh, be the intervention. We expect governments to, to look at other critical areas that is affecting ease of doing business mm. so that um, for those who do not get funding, they will also have other areas where they can make up and then um, come back to life because quite a number of businesses are dead now. Mm. I can tell you for free that about 20% of businesses have gone under in the last two and a half years, and that's uh, no good news. All right. Uh, it's a good thing that you talked about all the other uh, measures the government can do aside from just funding and the grant or loans that it is uh, provided. Uh, also, in passing, you talked about the one million nano businesses uh, that will benefit uh, between now and March. The uh, School of Thought believes that um, uh, giving them about uh, 50,000 uh, each to them is actually really nothing uh, if you're going to spread that across um, 774 uh, local government across the country. But then again, what about um, the issue of uh, 3,000 um, CNG uh, fuel buses? In as much as uh, it would buy, uh, impact on average Nigerians, it would also affect um, nano businesses. What are your thoughts, really? Come again, please. I said uh, I want to get your thought concerning uh, the 3,000 CNG uh, fueled uh, buses that the federal government is actually putting in the offering. I know that will somehow impact on nano businesses, you know, but I really want to get your thoughts uh, if you think it is a, a right step in the right direction. Yes, yes, it is. It's the right step. It is going to reduce cost of transportation a lot. 
quite a number of Nigerians, be it MSMEs and uh, other average Nigerians, engage in one form of transportation or the other. And public transport uh, is uh, of the majority. So uh, coming up with CNG vehicles uh, to his transportation is a good one. And I think it will also help to his uh, detention in the country at the moment. But we're also looking at government bringing up uh, the other CNG vehicles that can be used by uh, business owners. It's not everybody that goes through the public uh, transport mm -hmm. system. Particularly manufacturers would have to need uh, their own vehicle to transport their goods and products around the country. So we wish that the government also extend this CNG vehicle beyond just uh, the public transport to also provide the, uh, vehicles that can be used by the general public. And we believe that with that, the uh, cost of doing business will come down because we'll save more money that we'll have spent on buying petrol uh, and use for uh, for these CNG vehicles. And that also goes for generators. Quite a lot of uh, small business owners depend on uh, fuel, fuel, uh, petrol fueled generators. Petrol fuel generators. So, if you have CNG generators around the country that uh, uh, business owners can use, it will also help to push down the cost of production, cost of doing business, and that will be good for us. All right. Uh, let's, since you mentioned manufacturing, let's stay on that for a bit. Uh, there are plans for them, specifically 75 enterprises, uh, according to the president, with great potential you know, to kickstart a sustainable economic growth, uh, to accelerate structural transformation and improve productivity. Those are some of the words that he used. But the question right now would be, the selection process. You also talked about MSMEs and uh, how they uh, would, how we're going to channel this money to the right people. Now, 75 uh, manufacturers, uh, what do you really think uh, getting about 75 billion? Well, um, to start with, like I mentioned earlier, which you have also reiterated now, the selection process is key to us. We, we really want to know the criteria that governments will put in place for selection. Uh, because it's not good to just put one billion in hands of someone who will not make the best use of it. Where we have millions of other uh, businesses that can make very good use of this fund. We are also looking at the fact that um, the repayment period may not be too conducive for business. Uh, the repayment period, which is the working capital, is 12 months. Mm. I wonder what kind of business anyone will do today and get a, a support of one billion and be able to repay back in, in 12 months. Uh, that may not be feasible. So we expect governments this time to see how they can collaborate more with other stakeholders, particularly the business membership associations and organizations, so that we can help them fine-tune some of these policies as beautiful as they are. There are some gaps and loopholes here and there that we feel should be addressed. Uh, if actually the 75 billion gets to the 75 businesses, it's going to impact a very uh, 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 very maximally on the economy. We, this, we, we believe that in the next couple of months, six, 12 months, right, we should be able to see big impact in the economy. It should be able to create more jobs. It should be able to open up the economy if and only if the money gets to the right hand. We are also interested in the monitoring of this uh, process. Mm -hmm. One thing is to give out fund for 75 uh, uh, large businesses. Another thing is to ensure that the fund is used for the intended purpose. So we expect the, the, the government to come out with um, uh, policy statements telling us about committees or other parameters put in place to monitor the funding of these nano MSMEs and the large businesses that will partake in these palliatives. It is important so that um, when this money is refunded back to government, it can now go to the hands of newer people that may also need the fund. That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. And that's one link that has been missing in many of the intervention programs that government has been doing over the time. Okay, fine. There is also the argument of um, government attending to some other challenges. Uh, in passing, you talked about high electricity costs and people having to fuel uh, the generators uh, through um, PMS. What about the issues of uh, import duties and cargo clearing logistics? How can that be or those be addressed? The challenges of uh, MSMEs, particularly, is, uh, is, is myriad in this country. It's just most refrigerated. And um, these are some of the issues we are contending with. Even to get Forex in the banks, it's, it's an Apulian task. And in the black market, it's on a free fall every day. Quite a number of our input depends on Forex. And when Forex is not available or at a very high expense, it tells on the product. Because a, 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 an average producer will pass the buck back to the consumers. 
And the consumers themselves already have their, their disposable capital eroded by the inflation in the country. And that means that that, that is why business has been stunted now. They are not growing. Prices are growing, going up every day. Mm. Electricity, too, is another big challenge that we are facing. Like I mentioned the other time, many of our members uh, depend on petrol fuel generators. And when petrol prices go up, it also affects the cost of production. And it means that um, goods and services will always continue to go up mm. when even the masses do not have the fund to pay for the, the former price, not to talk of the increased prices that we have in the market today. So we are looking at a, 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 the intervention of government in this area. We're expecting government to also declare a state of emergency in the MSME sector as they have done in the food uh, sector, mm -hmm. such that uh, some of these challenges will be addressed. Like I mentioned, one of the needs of MSMEs is not just funding. All we need is right business environment. If the environment is friendly, many of businesses will try. Mm -hmm. One of which that is the issue of this multiple taxation that we have mentioned. Is, it, is the issue of uh, not inavailability of forex, is the issue of electricity, and quite a number of others. All right, uh, just before we go very quickly now, Dr. Egbechola, uh, food security, uh, the government uh, actually has uh, uh, declared a state of emergency in that sector. Let's talk about agri generally. In the short and medium terms, uh, the federal government says uh, it has released, or it is releasing, 200,000 metric tons of grains or grains from strategic reserves to households across the Federal Six State and the FCT to moderate prices and 225,000 metric tons of fertilizer, seedlings, and other inputs to farmers. Let me get your comments concerning all of that, finally. That's a very wonderful development. Uh, the basic need of every citizen of a country is food. So when you're able to solve food issues, you solve quite a number of problems. You support close to half of man's need. And um, coming to hear that um, the government is coming up to open their warehouses to bring out grains. Grain is one of the staple food we have. And there are so many value addition done to grain that, that is transformed to other kind of food. So it's going to bring down the prices of food automatically. We are also expecting government to come out with uh, the consumer board, which will help to regulate prices of all different kind of foods we have in the country. Right. We are also happy that um, in the speech of the president, he also mentioned that he's going to fund agriculture. Like you mentioned, uh, bringing out seedlings, bringing out um, about 500,000 hectares of land mm -hmm. and the rest of it. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Finally, we are wrapping up with you now. Okay, then. So, all of this is going to help us to grow the agricultural economy. And if agriculture is right, quite a number of other things we write. Many of our production also depends on inputs from the farm. Mm. So, uh, a, a lot of importation is coming into this country because we are not tapping into the potentials we have in agriculture. Right. Many of these inputs can be uh, planted here, grown here, and not only have added value to here, and be used for production purposes. Mm. But because they are not here, we spend money importing them, in using our currency to exchange for forex, which is not right. So if this is actually uh, done to the letter, I want to believe that in the next couple of months, uh, our agricultural sector should be transformed. Uh, I must say a very big thank you to you. I have been speaking with Dr. Femi Egbechola. He is the president of ASBON. That's the Association of Small Business Owners of Nigeria. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Thank you very much for having me once again. It's a pleasure. Yes, our pleasure as well. And that's the size of the show for today. But just before we go, the event Experience Africa Texas has hosted major stakeholders, event professionals, creatives, and business heads in the event industry since 2019 at a grand conference that sets the pace for an eclectic year as a professional uh, in the event industry. I'll leave you with details of that particular report. I am Justin Akadoni. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.